And welcome to Home Brewing 101, brought to you by Photography of Ozzy. Here we have all the equipment and ingredients required for your homebrew, and we are going to go through each one of them. So first of all, starting on the counter, to the far right, we have got cleaning and measuring tools. We've got a thermometer, a refractometer, and then finally a hydrometer. And in back of that, a funnel for pouring and mixing, and a bottle brush for cleaning. And, going further to the left, we've got additives for the wort, they call it. Gypsum to make the soft water more hard if needed. And past that is a yeast nutrient, which would be a food grade urea. And behind all of that is the stock pot, or the brew pot. A very good quality with an encapsulated bottom to prevent things from burning and sticking to the bottom of the brew pot. Further to the left we've got liquid malt extract. And you need about one pound per gallon. This is about six for a five gallon batch. And further to the left, down here, muslin bags, which are very important for putting in uh, things like uh, these secondary grains, crystal, chocolate, uh, yeah, for added aroma and flavor. And then further to the left of that, we have got, looks like, uh, yeah, pellet hops. And that's what you use for bittering, preserving, and aroma, depending upon the uh, recipe. And so then, down below, we have got a carboy with an airlock. Airlock the three piece, just lets air out, does not let it in because when the yeast does uh, carboxylation, you're going to not want to keep it, otherwise the pressure will go up and your carboy will be damaged. And below that is a carrier or a brew hauler, very um, important for being able to move your brew to one place or another. And then finally, we have got a measuring bucket. Measuring bucket because it has got an indication on the side of the volume capacity, volume of gallons and liters, depending upon if you want to go metric or standard. And another important aspect if you're going to be doing home brewing is the weather. As you can see outside, maybe it's going to be winter. And winter is greatly important for cooling the wort when you're done, which will assist in the procedure. So. I will be right back with uh, the putting it together and starting the homebrew. And welcome back to Homebrewing 101 with Photography of Ozzy. As you can see, we've got all the ingredients next to the stovetop. The muslin bag with the secondary grains right there ready to go, as well as the yeast extract and a spoon for stirring. It's not completely important that you have it sanitized, but it is a good idea, but you know, you will be having a wort boiling, so that'll kill most everything. And then the brew pot, as you can see, it's getting warmed up the water so that we can put the uh, grains in. And there is, if you can see it inside, a thermometer because you do not want this to go to boiling. You want to have it at about 68 degrees Celsius. Add the uh, additional grain bag for about uh, half an hour at 68 Celsius and then boil it. But uh, not until after you steep the grain at a less than boiling temperature do you want to, uh, you know, take that thermometer and not worry about it too much. And we will be back after this. And welcome back to Photography of Ozzy. It is very important that you monitor the temperature of the boiling water, the water to be boiled. And you're going to want to, you know, turn it down and off completely at about, yeah, 68 degrees Celsius so you can add the steeping grains to it. Because, you know, boiling is going to be too much, you're going to lose your uh, properties of aroma and, uh, um, yeah, liquid of the wort if you, uh, you know, let it go too high. So as we can see, this is actually getting to be about close to 70, so we're going to turn down the fire and, uh, in fact, we've almost turned it off. And we're going to add the grain now to steep for about a half an hour. So, we'll let that go and uh, put a cover on for good measure. And, yeah, the temperature is certainly at about 70, that's good enough. So, we just let that go for about uh, 20 minutes, roughly, give or take 10. And welcome back. 
The grains have steeped for about 15 minutes at the appropriate temperature, as you can see. It's, uh, yeah, 155 Fahrenheit or uh, 68 Celsius. Therefore, the grains are done. So they want to take them, pick them up, and uh, I would say give the bag a very soft squeeze against uh, this so that you can get uh, most of the, you know, liquid back into the wort. And therefore you're done with the green bag, so the green bag can, uh, you know, go away. And now it's the burner's off, and you now want to add your liquid malt extract. Best way to do that, put it directly into the wort, and, uh, you know, let it go out that way. Because remember, it's going to be boiling later, and, uh, you know, it'll take off any contamination that um, is going on. So, yeah, certainly is a good way to do that. Just, uh, oh, and you're going to want your spoon at this point, so you can go ahead and do some uh, stirring while it's going down. And, uh, yeah, it'll take a while. And after you're done, you're going to want to boil and then add the, uh, the hops and whatnot. So, I'd say for now, we'll get all this stuff out of the way, and we will go ahead, put this uh, stuff out and in. And then aroma hops after we get to a boil. So, until then, we will see you later. And welcome back. It's a little hard to see, but we've got a boil going on. The thermometer is, uh, yeah, not easy to, you know, rely on, but you can see from the boiling that it is at 100 Celsius. So, I'm going to put the, the thermometer away, and we then start with the bittering hops. And so, oh, we're going to want to turn that down because we're getting into a boil over and you don't want to boil over if you can help it. So that's off, the hops are now in, and this goes for one hour. Of course you're going to want to keep it going, the temperature, but uh, a problem with boil overs, they're messy and you want to, yeah, avoid them by... Uh, I will show you in a moment here. Once we get this back on, I will show you what a boil over is like. So, as you can see, we've got this going, and the boil is, uh, you know, going on. You want to keep it boiling at least for one hour with these uh, bittering hops. So I will cover this and show you what it means to have it uh, with a, a, a compact volume type of thing with uh, increased temperature. As pressure goes up, you will get a boil over which is very, very messy. You don't want that. So, as this is going, the best way usually to handle a boil over is to open up the volume when it begins to do the boil over itself. So 55 minutes, and there we go. Now, as you can see, that'll go for one hour with the hops right here. When you've got this covered, that's where and when the boil over can come about, which you really don't want. You want to keep it boiling though, the entire time. Now this is where Boyle's Law comes into play. Pressure 1 times volume 1 is going to be um, related to the pressure 2, volume 2. So therefore, if you open it up, you make less pressure because the volume, of course, goes up because it's no longer being contained by this lid. But as you can see, it's starting to boil over, which is what you don't want. So therefore, yeah, I'm going to keep that turned down. Better yet, just leaving it like that will make sure you don't have a boil over for the one hour. So yeah, always a good idea to keep the volume uh, pretty relatively high so that the pressure does not go, um, you know, through the roof. 
And while we're waiting for the bittering hops to finish, it is also a good idea to check the validity or the uh, viability of your yeast. In this case, we've got two because it's always good to have more than one in case one of them is not a living, you know, uh, strain of yeast. So this yeast is meant for brewing. It gives you a higher alcohol percentage. And the way to test whether or not it's still um, a valid yeast is to, first of all, get some sugar after you've washed out that uh, cup about uh, half a teaspoon, put that in, and then you want to get some boiling water put in there as well, so you can make sure that everything's sanitized. You pour that in, and you're going to want to stir that, and let it wait and cool to room temperature for a while. So, It'll take about maybe uh, a good 10 minutes for it to get down to like room temperature. It is way too hot. If you put the yeast in there, it's going to kill it. So you don't want to do that. And welcome back. We are waiting for the bittering hops to come to an end so we can put the aroma hops in. And that will happen when the timer goes off. So as you can see, yeah, it still is uh, boiling and we don't have any, uh, you know, problem with uh, a boil over at all because we've kept it open. And so then we have another muslin bag with the aroma hops that we're going to put in right now for five minutes. So, then we will take it and lower the temperature ASAP. And here we go. A nice snowbank. And it's good. And finally, you want to aerate the wort. And this is how you do it. And now pour it into the Kerboy and this should be the end result. And now we want to test the validity of the yeast, or shall we say viability. So you just, uh, you know, take this, and cut the top and uh, pour it in. And after about five minutes, we can see that there is some foam coming about. So the yeast is valid, apparently. But the best way to find out would be by tomorrow if you can see like a crossing and, uh, you know, bubbling occurring at the airlock if, in the wart. So, yeah, I would say that it's a valid yeast. And if it's not, for whatever reason, then you can always add another packet. So, I will add that uh, right now because the wart is right there and the nice thing is is uh, I've already added the gypsum and the yeast uh, nutrient so therefore the and it is at a room temperature so it is certainly not overheated so therefore you take the yeast and just dump it in and then you go ahead take the funnel out and put the airlock in place and then take it to a, uh, a dark room and finally one more thing to do with a uh, clean hydrometer and a clean hand of course you certainly can save a lot of time by putting the hydrometer 
directly into the carboy. Now people of course have mentioned that you can take some of the wort out and measure it that way, but it's just more contamination potential. So you are certainly better off taking off this um, airlock and therefore you want to slide in the hydrometer gently. It's a very delicate thing, you didn't want to walk with it in the carboy. So what you do is you just go and like this, very gently, let it slide in and then it should come up to the surface and then you can tell with that like what sugar concentration you have so you know when to stop or transfer the brew. Now this goes back on and now for the final step you want it to be dark. Now it's in the corner out of the way but the best way to keep the yeast going strong is by making it completely dark for the yeast. That's what they like. They like that a lot. And in one night, we see the primary fermentation underway, meaning we can now move it on to a secondary carboy for the secondary fermentation in one week. So, I will be updating this video after that.